We all go a little mad sometimes. Haven't you? They could be anybody's. Nobody... Nobody trusts anybody now. We're all very tired. Put the bat down, Wendy. Stop it! Give me the bat. Wait! Stop swinging the bag. Wait, stop! Give me the bag. Get it! Ready? Die! Give me the bag. Die! Give me the bag. Ah, God damn it! What is up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new podcast that is hitting you guys over the airwaves. Uh, this is the... MVM Horror Podcast, or uh, for those of you who are old school and uh, don't like to abbreviate, the Movie vs. Movie Horror Podcast, but um, I'm just always going to refer to MVM for, you know, because I guess I'm, uh, I'm a, a millennial, I guess, so. Yeah, we're, um, we're too lazy for all that. <laughs> yes, yeah, so uh, anyways, um, yeah, this is, of course, the our pilot episode. Um my name is Austin Schroyer. Um, some of you guys uh, may know me from uh, as one half of the Woodsboro Bros podcast on the Horophilia Network. And uh, yeah, of course, I am joined by um, my co-host, my very good friend, most of the time, Carly. What's up? Ah, hey, hey, great to be here. Uh not too much. Uh, of course, I'm Carly, a.k.a. Cowry, um, whatever you want to call me. I mean, y'all probably know me from Netflix and Chill, which comes out sometimes with good old JP. Uh, other than that, I'm known for guesting on pretty much every other podcast on the network, and um, and I do YouTube videos sometimes, so... That's about it for me, but um, anyway, I'm excited to start this new pot up with you, Mr. Austin, um, and I think I think it could be interesting, and we can come up with a lot of great stuff, so how have you been? Yeah, I've been uh, really good, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm actually really, really excited to, uh, to uh, do this as well. Um, now, uh, for... Uh, some of you um, who um, may have heard us on our previous podcast that we did, um, we just kind of uh, left the uh, the uh, Body Bags channel uh, from YouTube, so it was kind of, you know, can't really do the podcast anymore. Um, so yeah, we were both, um, of course, doing the, like I said, the uh, Body Bags for a podcast before this, so uh, we have a little bit of, uh, a little bit of um, history podcasting together. Um, already, so um, that'll work out in our favor a little bit, actually, so that'll be cool. But, uh, yeah, um, honestly, too, with that podcast, I feel like, you know, we were really limited in stuff we could do, like, creatively. Um, really couldn't have that many, like, cool and, you know, creative ideas and interesting stuff. Um, yeah, and, like, you know, like, JP kind of, I was telling him about our idea, and he was, like, asking, well, why didn't you just it could still be body bags and you can just change it up. And I don't know. I just feel like it's a better idea to kind of start fresh, especially mm -hmm. since we were using the title of the YouTube channel. Yeah. That was kind of the point of the podcast. And yeah, like you said, I mean, uh, all we were doing on there is just reiterating all we said on the YouTube channel. So we thought it would just be kind of cool to start our own little new thing and um, come up with, Obviously, the theme here is movie versus movie, but we can also come up with some other interesting horror-related topics along the way. So, um, yeah, I think we both just felt it would be good to start fresh here. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, yeah, I definitely do have a lot of, you know, other cool ideas besides this format. Um, yeah, this will be our main format, you know, comparing 
uh, just you know taking two horror movies that um, you know have or of the same subgenre or just uh, the same style uh, from you know maybe a sequel versus the original, maybe the original versus remake, um, pretty much anything. I mean, we have there's you know tons and tons of combinations we could do. I mean, pretty much any movie you can look at and you know compare it to something else. Uh, that's been mm-hmm. made before or afterwards, so, um, but yeah, I have, um, of course, we'll be doing, um, other kinds of episodes, we'll be doing some top ten episodes on here, um, every once in a while, um, one thing we will have on this podcast as well that we didn't on the last one is we'll be able to have, uh, you know, a special guest on, guest host, which I already have one, um, well, a few of them have already, um, showed interest on coming on here already, so, um, Heck yeah, def- yeah. yeah, definitely be, uh, having him on, um, so, yeah, I'm, uh, just, uh, really, really excited to get into this, um, now, I do, uh, I do want to, uh, send a shout out to, uh, uh, Joey and Fonty, who did, uh, the, uh, opening intro for this, uh, podcast, uh, the, in- the of course, the music you guys hear at the beginning, um, we did use it for the, uh, Body Bags podcast as well, but, um, we only did that for, like, what, I think it was eight or nine episodes, I think. I believe and, uh, so, yeah. Yeah, I just, you know, I just didn't want it to go to waste. I think it sounds really cool, so, mm-hmm. I was like, might as well just use the, use the same thing. So, um, yeah, it didn't, I, I would feel bad asking for another one, like, a couple months yeah. after I, I asked the, for the first one, so... Yeah, it's your basic horror-related intro, and it's pretty dope. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah, definitely a big thanks to him because it's pretty creative. Yeah, and uh, also thanks to Jason Lloyd, of course, the head of uh, the Horophilia, Horophilia Network. Um, of course, we are a pod, uh, part of. You can uh, catch both of our other podcasts, of course, Netflix and Chill and Woodsboro Bros on there. Um as well as many other really, really awesome podcasts. You know, 22 Shots, Exploding Heads, for now, Horror Corridor. Um, yeah, some really, really good stuff out there. So, yeah, definitely uh, give uh, the rest of those guys a, uh, a a look, a listen. I can't imagine too many people are listening to this that haven't listened to those, but uh, you never know. <laughs> I've, actually had, uh, I've actually had one of my uh, old uh, friend's brother messaged me like a month and a half ago and said that he found me and my brother's podcast and saying, you know, keep up the good work and stuff like that. So you never know, you know, there's, yeah, that's might, pretty cool. might be some people out there that, uh, haven't less, haven't heard, heard those ones. So, um, yeah, um, more like kind of uh, like more of what, uh, this podcast is going to be. Um, now there are other podcasts, um, that do, like, something similar to this. I know Kill the Cast does, you know, their Horror Coliseum, which they do, like, a really in-depth breakdown of, you know, every movie they go into, like, they rate, like, you know, uh, the effects, the kills, the characters. You go in and rate those and, like, kind of break down the movies they compare. Um, so, yeah, um, that's a really cool, um, thing to listen to as well. But, uh, yeah, um... We are going to be doing ours um, a little bit differently. Uh, just kind of, we're not really not going to get like too deep into these movies. Um, not like more like um, not really like a traditional review, I'd say. Um, there are plenty of podcasts you can go. You know, both of our podcasts. You know, that can, that will probably have actual you know full length you know kind of re- more traditional reviews of these movies and breakdowns. So um, we'll be doing it kind of more. Um, kind of more casually, kind of just going in, um, you know, kind of giving our likes and dislikes for each movie, um, and then we'll, um, you know, add our ratings together at the end, and, uh, see which movie comes out the winner, uh, for the episode, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of, uh, what the format is, uh, gonna be, so, uh, yeah, you got anything else before, uh, we get started with this, I guess. Not really. I mean, pretty much you said it all. Um, You know, like you said, we're not going to do huge reviews because, honestly, the movies we're going to do are probably films that are more well-known for the most part. Mm -hmm. So you guys probably have already 
seen them yourselves or heard many people talk about them, so there's really not much purpose in, I mean, especially the ones that we're about to talk about, like, say, tonight. Yeah. Um, I feel like I feel like you guys don't really need to hear another review of some of these movies. If we do talk about more uh, lesser-known films, I say maybe we can get into them a little bit more, yeah. but yeah, um, pretty chill podcast, and like I said, I'm pretty excited to uh, just casually talk about them and um, get into why we like them and whatnot. Yeah, so, um, yeah, plus two, um, two, like, with me, you know, I'm probably going to re be reviewing, actually doing, like, actual reviews for um, pretty much, I'd say, most of these movies on my other podcasts, so it kind of... Mm -hmm. Uh, it kind of gets really gets really old. Um, you know, I had a, <laughs> like that yeah, time you yeah the time you to, reviewed. How, oh, okay, uh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> the, the, yeah. The, the, she was she, she was uh, mentioning uh, the kind of incident I ran into last year with uh, doing uh, House on Story Row um, back to back episodes on both podcasts and reviewing them, and it was just it was hell. Like it was, you know, I I basically just repeated myself. Um, so it's just kind of it kind of defeats the purpose, I think so, and it's kind of just uh, kind of don't uh, don't feel like doing that anymore. Yeah, so, not uh, not a fun time. <laughs> yeah, so this way I'll be able to you know do it on here and actually go over and do an actual more of a traditional review on on my other podcast. So win win for that. So um, yeah, getting into the movies we are talking about today, uh, you guys might have heard of these movies. Um, they are rather obscure, I think so. Um, mm -hmm. And that is um, from 1982, directed by John Carpenter, and that is The Thing, um, not a remake, by the way. It is a the act the first real adaptation of the book, um, so not really a remake. Um, and from 1980. Directed by Stanley Kubrick, 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 <laughs> Kubrick. Kubrick. <laughs> You're up in the ball. <laughs> Whatever. Um, at least I corrected myself. You know, at least I can, I can share. Yeah, you I did. Can say it right. You bounced so. back. Yeah. So, yes, and that is The Shining, of course. Now, uh, we wanted to start out with these two movies. Um, well, the main reason uh, we start out with these two movies is. One of these is my favorite horror film of all time. One of these is Carly's. And, um, but yeah, there's actually, like, thinking about it, there's actually, like, a lot more in common about these two movies than just that and just, like, you know, the basic, uh, other basic stuff about these. Like, mm. yeah, like, yeah, they're both, you know, they take place in the snow and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, they both directed by, you know, two of the best directors of all time. Um, but, uh, yeah, they're both kind of on the same level of, like, you know, uh, like, kind of, like, psychological, um, you know, the feeling of, like, isolation. Uh, these film, these two films do that, I think, um, pretty much the same, just in, like, different ways. You know, of course, The Shining is more, uh, is, uh, you know, supernatural, and The Thing is, you know, body horror, alien, whatever. Mm. Um... But yeah, it's um, definitely um, definitely more um, in common about these two movies than uh, you know what you would uh, what you would think actually. Yeah, and like you know, you kind of brought up the idea of having these two be our first episode, and when you first said it, I kind of thought to myself, I don't really know if those two would go together well. I don't know if there's much to really say, but then. Watching them both, I was like, oh, because like you just said, you know, obviously the biggest comparison is, oh, there's snow in this movie and mm -hmm. there's snow in that movie, like they're a big whoop. But um, yeah, actually watching it, the uh, general concepts and themes are pretty, pretty similar. Mm -hmm. I think they're obviously very different as far as um, the way they're shot and just... Uh, the type of feel and atmosphere, I guess, you get. Mm -hmm. um, it, kind of the same atmosphere, but uh, The Shining, I would consider a little more of a slower burn. And then The Thing, um, while it might have some slow moments, I feel like the you have this bigger cast and uh, more interesting types of characters that kind of make it roll along a little more. But um, the 
general idea of the isolation and just the how you can kind of start to not trust the people that you're stuck in this isolated area with, uh, I think that's very, very similar. So, um, yeah, what, you know, looking at the surface, they don't seem like they're not that much alike, but then actually if you watch them kind of back to back, which is what I did, I watched them both in one day, um, I found that there were some pretty good similarities going on. Yeah, well said. Um, yeah, uh, there's also, like, I think, like, um, another thing I think it had in common is, like, when I, when I watched, like, the opening, like, the, like, the very, like, opening shot to both of these films, well, I guess it's not the very opening shot for the thing, but, like, it kind of has almost the same opening shot, you know, The Shining has, like, you know, the, the main score, the main score for it playing, and, um, kind of like that helicopter shot of, uh, of all the landscape and all the mountains and stuff like that, and, uh, the thing kind of does the same thing where you, know, you get this helicopter shot of all the snow and all the mountains and all this, you know, stuff like that. And, uh, you know, very similarly, um, both these openings, like, instantly give me goosebumps every time, you know, I, I watch them. It's like just um, – it's just the music and the way it's shot. Um, yeah, I think it definitely um, – it does def uh, do the same thing for me there. Yeah, that's actually funny you – bring that up as a comparison because I actually thought the same thing while watching them and then I was like oh I might be just kind of grasping at straws here and trying to make a comparison but um yeah they're both they're both kind of long openings too mm -hmm. when you think about it it takes a while to actually get to your main characters and the story and um yeah I just get really kind of pumped up to watch the movies when I see the openings um especially obviously The Shining because that's one of my favorites mm -hmm. ever but um yeah. Yeah, very, very, um, I, I really like, I find that I really like these winter settings. That's kind of mm -hmm. something that I find I've been drawn to as of lately, these past few years. Um, they just, I hate the cold. That's something I really hate. Uh, darkness and cold just are the two most depressing things for me when it comes to the earth. And um, I think that's when I see a movie that depicts that well and makes you actually kind of feel cold like you can really feel how freezing it is and both these movies it just seems like just so dreadful to actually mm. be outside um maybe more so in the thing especially when you see like how kurt russell is kind of looking at the end but um uh well hey when you see what jack nicholson's looking like at the yeah. end too but um good there, there we go there's another one um yeah. but, but um yeah yeah i just I really love uh, movies that take place in the winter or just the snow in general. I think they're very atmospheric and add to the gloom and dread that a horror movie should have. Mm. Yeah, so um, I guess we will uh, – we'll just go ahead and talk about um, the thing first. Um, yeah, uh, you know, we already I already mentioned one of the things, you know, I you know absolutely love about this movie – um, you know, the opening shot just instantly gives me goosebumps, but, uh, you know, one of the things that I've really never witnessed or noticed until, well, actually the first time I watched this was on Blu-ray, but, uh, um, I really didn't notice until, like, you know, a couple watches in, you know, this is actually, like, pretty, uh, pretty, like, you know, colorful movie. Not in, like, in the sense of, like, you know, like, maybe, like, Suspiria, there's a bunch of, like, you know, crazy lights going off everywhere, but, uh, the colors mm -hmm. really pop in this movie. Um, you know, with the, uh, the snow and everything, and, like, when there's a flare and stuff like that, it, like, really, like, brights up the place, and, uh, you know, there's a bunch of, like, a couple, like, lights on, like, all the computers and shit like that. Uh, it's kind of one of the more, it's kind of, like, probably the only underrated aspect about this movie, because I feel like nothing is really underrated about this movie. I think, you know, pretty much everybody uh, everybody gives praise to the, the right things when it comes to this film. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would, that, that's an interesting observation, because when you kind of think about this movie, I always think of it as being a more dark type of film, mm -hmm. but I definitely noticed that a little bit. Um, I don't really look at things that much, I guess, into things that much with the technical level when I'm watching. Because I watched this on, actually, I got a Scream Factory Blu-ray, so I finally watched that. And um, I noticed, like, at the end with the explosions and the fire, like, that looked very vivid. And 
good on Blu-ray. So um, I could definitely see what you're seeing, uh, saying, but like I said, it's a cool observation because I always kind of picture this, as I said, as a dark and gloomy film, but I guess there are some, when the color pops, it really pops, mm-hmm. especially with like the special effects and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Like, um, no, honestly, like, this is kind of the same theme for me when it comes to, like, a lot of my, you know, favorite horror films. Um, I didn't see this movie until probably, like, four years ago, maybe. Um, uh-huh. Like, I didn't really grow up with this, um, and I actually, the first time I saw it was on the, you know, Blu-ray I gave you, um, the Universal Blu-ray. So, um, mm. you know, watching, of course, that Blu-ray looks great and everything, but, uh, you know, uh reason I gave it to you is because I got the uh, the Arrow uh, 4K they put out um, a couple years ago. Well, la- last year? The year before? I can't remember, but that box that they put out, whatever. Um, and, like, I have to say, like, you know, I'd watched that movie, like, probably, you know, about uh, seven or eight times by that point. And Jeez. when <laughs> when, like, the first scene happens with the dog and the transformation and stuff like that, like, it blew my mind on this transfer. Like it, re- like it really looks like just really, really gruesome. Like the colors pop out more, and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it, it kind of almost like shocked me all over again. Like it did the first time I watched the movie. So uh, yeah, um, that's uh, I, I'd say like this is like I, you know, don't usually say this about two main movies, but this is a movie I definitely think you have to see on Blu-ray. It's definitely one that even makes the movie even better in my opinion um but yeah the effects and stuff on this transfer that i have and uh it just makes it even more gruesome and just uh amazing Mm -hmm. yeah i would agree that was actually the scene i was picturing when you said about the colors popping is that Mm. dog scene and that's probably my favorite scene in the whole movie it actually gives me chills thinking about it just that dog the way the dog walks in there and kind of sits there, you can just tell it's not a dog. <laughs> it's, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's just such a creepy moment. And I think I, I would totally agree. Blu-ray probably really helps this film because with all the uh, special effects moments, I think uh, they really kind of stand out a lot more. And this is one of those movies that really kind of grosses me out in some parts. And uh, yeah, you definitely get a good look at every little thing and you really kind of grow a new appreciation for it so um i'm the same way with where i only saw this movie for the first time probably i want to say might have been 2015 so probably like you said four three or four years ago i didn't grow up with it um actually i remember i used to watch halloween when i was a kid a lot and when they were watching the thing from another world on tv i always thought that that was this movie and then i was like wait a minute this movie came out years after that that doesn't make any sense and i was like whoa this guy okay i see what happened here so um yeah not i was not knowledgeable about this film at all growing up um the first time i saw it i saw it on a really crappy television i was living at home we still had like an old you you know a a dinosaur for a Mm. tv so i felt like i didn't pay attention to it that well and then Saw it again in theaters, uh, really grew appreciation for it, and saw it again in theaters and a uh, few times since then. And honestly, I think it's a fantastic, near-perfect film. Uh, for me, it's definitely, I don't know what it is, it's just not one that I really go back to a lot, though. Uh, obviously, for you, it's one that you can probably pop in any time for comfort, and I don't know. I just don't feel that way about this movie. Anytime I get the chance to watch it, I'm down, and I think it's a great film, but it's, it's just not one that I feel like rewatching over and over again. But I really think it's fantastic. Yeah, I watch that. About, makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah, I I usually watch this probably about uh, probably twice a year. You know, probably around the same time. You know, during the winter and stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what my favorite scene in this movie would be. Like, it's... God, like, I love... Like, the dog scene probably was definitely up there. Um, that scene where one of the characters goes running out and, like, he's... is like, transformed. Like, his hand, his hands look all fucking deformed and gross. And he starts, like, gives out that really, like, horrific shriek. <laughs> and, uh... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's always... Uh, that scene always really creeps me out. And, uh, of course, the blood testing scene is amazing. The, uh... 
the scene with the defibrillator is great. Um, yeah, it's it's really really hard for me to pick. Um, you know, this is you know this is just like I have I have like a reason for like you know maybe having some of these movies, my, some of my favorite movies for you know as to why they're my favorite movies like Scream. You know, it's a great film, obviously, but you know, obviously I have a lot of nostalgia for that film. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. Halloween, the same thing. Um, you know, uh, Evil Dead is just one of those movies that has pretty much everything I like about horror in there. You know, all these different like elements and stuff like that. But you know, this this is pretty much straight up. You know, this is probably my favorite horror film of all time, just because I think every aspect about this film is just absolutely perfect. Like, it's I have. From the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. Like, this, it was instantly one of my favorite horror films ever, like, after I saw it. And, you know, for that, a film, to, for a film I got to have an effect on you immediately is, uh, is, um, you know, just tells how awesome it is. But there really isn't any actual flaws in this movie, I don't think. Like, um, I would still say that this. I would probably say these are probably the best effects that I've ever been in a horror film, still to this day. Like, they are just gnarly. Uh, they're, of course, um, all done practically, obviously. But, uh, yeah. They're just so unique. It's yeah. Like... It's it's just really disturbing and just shocking. And uh, I, I just don't think there's been any horror film to top it since. I honestly, I honestly don't think so. Yeah, I totally understand you. I mean, um, like with Scream and Halloween, those are two uh, uh, movies that people consider 10 out of 10s, and I probably still would as well. But I also find that those movies have flaws Mm -hmm. that kind of just get overlooked because they're these classic, great films. And then with this one, I really don't see any flaws or, like, major plot holes, or it's pretty... There's not really room for any holes in this movie. I mean, the creature itself is just a mystery, so that's mm-hmm. not a big thing or anything. The acting is fantastic. I think all the characters are pretty entertaining. The only complaint I really ever had with it is I used to kind of get confused on um, who, which character was which. They're mm-hmm. all calling each other by like their last names, of course, and... Um, I used to just kind of get them mixed up. It's all guys as well. I find when you have a cast, it's all girls or all guys, even though they all pretty much look different. Um, I still just get confused on whose name is who, but that's kind of just a dumb little nitpick. I mean, it's not, once again, it's hard to even nitpick the movie, really. I mean, like I said, me personally, I'm not, it's not, it's just not one that I rewatch a lot. Uh, Anytime, they put this movie in theaters a lot as just a classic throwback, and I'm always willing to go out and watch it because it is a good one to watch. But if I'm sitting at home at night and I want to put on an older film that I've watched before, this usually isn't one that I'll run to. But, uh, yeah, I don't really see actual problems with it. So, yeah. No. And, uh, you know, one thing I, you know... Uh kind of, I was kind of, you know, kind of more studying this time when I was watching it, um, you know, with all the characters, like you said, like, I, I'm horrible with character names, like, I seriously have a hard time remember pretty much any, like, most of the characters' names in this movie, or pretty much any horror film I watch, like, it's just something that always just doesn't stick with me for some reason, um, I can too. never, I can never remember any of the characters. Like it's almost embarrassing, but yeah, just watch um, my YouTube videos. I'm just like, so, so this guy goes yeah. here, and I'm like, me, I just watch the film. So yeah, I'm totally. Yeah, it could be much. the most popular movie in the world, and I still don't know the names, but that's yeah, pretty much how I'll be with this. Of course, I know, I know a couple other names, but like, like you said, I do get kind of confused about who they are, but it really doesn't matter to me. But like, these characters, like. Like, there's really nothing, there's really no, like, actual, like, depth to them. Like, we don't know any, like, any other backstories or, ever, or anything like that. Um, they're pretty much, they they kind of have, like, all of them play, like, different roles. Like, you know, McCready's, like, the, the pilot and whatnot. And there's someone, like, of course, of course, the dude who just rolls around roller skates and the dude who... That guy's who, name is uh, Miles. Yeah? <laughs> I get, I just, <laughs> listen, like, okay, not you the sound racist. But for the longest time, 
I mean, well, like, the first, like, time I watched the movie, I, I thought there was only one black guy in the movie, and oh, I was... Oh, man. And so his name is, like, Niles, and the other guy's Childs. name is Child. Yeah. Like, you gave them very similar-sounding names, and then they're not, like, always in the same scene together, so I was, like, halfway through the film, I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I realized <laughs> I was a total moron, so... Yeah, that's... That's just a little fun fact about me. <laughs> Probably getting racist on episode one. Here we yeah. go. Yeah, we're all crazy. <laughs> all the listeners have dropped off. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, like there's really not a whole lot to them. It's more about like the, the like they're all like the same type of character too. They're all kind of like this. You know, they're all dudes, kind of like all these like these like macho, you know, tough guy dudes. Um, mm-hmm. it's more about like the way they react. Um, when they're put into this situation, um, you know, some of them, you know, completely lose their shit, um, and we get others that, um, you know, come out to be the, uh, the leaders of the, the group and, you know, take over the situation, like McCready and Childs and, um, but not, but, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the only thing we get as of, like, character development in this one, you know, McCready, when, like, he starts out, um, he's kind of just like a character. He's a you know cool, cool you know tough guy character, and then you know kind of as the film the film goes on, he kind of just takes over as the leader. So that's pretty much the only thing we get. And Childs is kind of like the leader that opposes McCready basically. Um, so yeah, that's what we get with um with those guys. And uh, yeah, it's again it's more about the situation they're put into. Um. You know, with uh, you know the paranoia that we see, and um, I will say, like, it is like always really, really scary to see like all these like tough guys like all in all in one area and just see the fear that's on their face um, for what's mm-hmm. happening and paranoia. So um, that's always scary. But yeah, it's really not like a character movie. Um, I this is like I don't think the characters needed to be anything more at all. Um, they, yeah. they, they serve their purpose just perfectly. Yeah, I would agree. Um, they're just kind of that you don't need to know like what's going on in any of their family lives mm-hmm. or anything like that. There are some movies that definitely benefit from that, but in this case, uh, it doesn't affect the story really at all. You just see that these are some guys who are on a job and then stuff goes horribly wrong. So that's definitely not an issue. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I I think again like I I really think everything about this movie is perfect for me. Like I think the pacing is perfect. Um, uh, you know, there's really not a dull moment in this movie. There's some moments with just like dialogue and stuff in it, but I don't think they're boring at all. Like mm-hmm. I just you know kind of take a break from the action, but it really makes the scenes that you know when shit actually does happen, it makes it really stand out more and come way more effective. Something that the the prequel I was gonna say remake but the prequel um you know kind of didn't get right I don't think with the uh the uh the pacing I think I was just too fast paced um as opposed I, to this one I haven't seen that movie I've only seen that movie once and I remember thinking it was decent but it's yeah. been so long so I don't I, I would like to watch that one and this one kind of back to back because I didn't do that when I saw the prequel and I yeah. would I'd be interested to see how I feel about it now. But yeah, it is it is decent. I mean, like it's there's still some effective moments in it, but of course the CG, it, of course the CGI in the movie is just awful. I mean, it's yeah, it's yeah, just, remember, it's yeah. kind of one of those annoyances where you take the best parts about the original movie and make it your weakness in the next <laughs> minutes like ugh, I don't know why they wanted of course it was originally planned to have practical effects but the studio mm-hmm. changed it so it wasn't really the director's fault with that one but uh yeah um uh yeah the score um you know I always used to think John Carpenter did the score for this one but uh it is Ennio Morricone I believe if I pronounced it right he does he actually does the uh did the score for a lot of Argento's earlier movies, like Bird, and um, oh. he did. Uh, he actually did Night Train Murders, uh, Stenhall Syndrome. Um, mm. I'm, I'm naming the movies I actually like. He did Cat of Nine Tails too, <laughs> but I don't really care. Um, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah, the score in this movie is fantastic, and um, I don't know if the scene, I don't know if the scene's like underrated, um, but you don't really hear it brought up with the best kind of horror endings. But yeah, this this ending is really just just utterly chilling. I mean, like you, it's still debate, you know, of course today about uh, about what's you know what actually happens if you know McCready or childs are infected or they're neither of them are or both of them are we don't know we don't know if they just sit there and freeze to death um it's open for you know interpretation whatever um but uh yeah it's just such a such an absolutely chilling ending yeah i got chills thinking about it <laughs> i mean no matter what happens at the end it's just like yeah. There's nothing happy. I don't think a plane came down from the sky and saved them both. That's all I'm saying. But yeah, it's it's great. It's a downer ending, but that's that's fine sometimes if it's done right. And this is done right. So yes, absolutely. Um, um, did you say? Are we giving ratings now? Or are we gonna? No, we'll do. Yeah, we'll no. Rate okay. Both uh, both at the end. But uh, yeah. Um, also, just noted real quick uh, the. One of the dudes from this movie, uh, the dude who's like, uh, he's like the doctor, and I think he's the doctor in this movie. He's like tied up to the bed, uh, mm. tied to the couch. He's like, you know, I don't want to be spent all this time tied to this fucking couch. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that dude, um, he like, I think he passed away like a month ago or so, actually. Aww. So, yeah, that was uh, really sad when I heard that because that's the best line in that movie. It's amazing. Um, yeah, I but, didn't know that. Yeah, just uh, just an absolutely perfect movie for me. Uh, you know, just to see the you know everybody, everything break out into pure chaos. All the characters just you know completely losing their minds. One of them, uh, just a lot of like cool little tidbits, you know, and with some of the scenes like um, that you don't notice on first couple watches. Um, with that one dude that McGreedy goes and visits up in the up in the cabin that gets they lock him in there. He has like a noose tied up in there. Um, which for some reason I never never noticed that until a couple watches ago. And it's right in front of them. I guess I just wasn't paying attention. Um, yeah, I noticed that when I saw it in theaters the first time, and I was actually laughing at the. Like, yeah. It's, it's just like this perfect noose. Yeah, it just shows like he's just losing he's losing his shit. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that and uh, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a crazy and just a perfect movie for me. So. Have anything else before we move on to the next one? No, not really. I mean, I pretty much agree with you. I think it's um, pretty much flawless. Uh, like I said, it's not. Is it one of my favorites? No, but I definitely. It's a rare case where I would agree it's perfect. It's just not. Not something I rewatch a whole lot, but um, and that's in, like I always assumed Carpenter did the score as well. So that's kind of interesting that. It was some dude who does all those other movies you listed, but um, I think it does have a pretty chilling score that goes along with it perfectly as well. But yeah, that's about all I have on this one as well. All right, so um, moving on to the next film, of course, um, we said was The Shining. So uh, yeah, um, ironically, I actually have a lot of I have a lot more nostalgia for this movie than I do for The Thing. Um, this <laughs> is, um, I, I stated on my uh, on the Woodsboro Bros podcast, and um, probably I think on the first episode that yeah, you know, I had five movies as a kid, um, and I was like five or six or whatever that I'd have on VHS and I'd just play over and over again, and this was mm-hmm. one of them. Uh, I just would put this in and play it over and over and over again. And, um, it's kind of crazy, because, like, like an, not until, like, two years ago did I find out that this movie is actually two and a half hours long, or somewhere yeah. around there. Like, it, like, to me, like, it does not feel like that one bit. Like, I, I watched it this time, and I was like, it, it just absolutely flew by. It's, it's absolutely amazing. Yeah, man, like, that, I, obviously, like, as kids, you don't really pay attention to freaking time you know, the runtimes of films, you just kind of watch movies when you're younger, uh, 
you know, you don't pay it. You're not like Googling and going on IMDb to see how long this freaking movie is going to be. And I totally agree. I never really paid attention. I mean, I, I remember thinking it was kind of a longer film maybe, but uh, two hours and freaking 26 minutes. That's what I remember. I looked it up recently when I watched it actually, because I was curious to see how long it was. And, uh, you know, nowadays, <laughs> When I see a movie and it's that long, I'm just like, oh, son of a bitch. Like, I don't, I don't want to watch this. It's going to take up so much time, and then I have to, like, be invested in it. And But with this movie, it's just one that – and it's weird because it's more – it kind of has that, like, slow burn type of vibe to it. So you just have – it's just a family in a hotel that's slowly kind of descending into madness a little bit, and that's all you're really getting for all this time, but – for some reason, it just kind of clicks along really well, and I don't know if that's just nostalgia or what. I, you know, I'd be interested in. I don't really know many people who haven't seen the movie, but see, if someone watched it maybe later in life, they might find it to be kind of boring. But um, I don't really know. But yeah, this is one that uh, I grew up watching as well. I wouldn't say I watched it on repeat. Like you said, uh, for me, I've always said that was Halloween that I would watch over and over. But this is one that uh, I definitely watched when I was pretty young. I forget what age I was, but uh, I was still pretty young. I remember my mom showed it to me. And it was one that was on TV a lot when I was growing up. And um, I don't really watch a lot of TV today, but it seemed like it was always on TV like around Halloween time especially, and then just random times also during the year. And anytime it was on TV, I would kind of put it on, and it was one of those movies where it would be kind of halfway through the film, and I would start watching it from there. But um, I've definitely watched this one quite a bit, and uh, obviously it's one that I claim to be my favorite horror movie of all time nowadays. Um, I, there's just something about the movie that it, it has a completely different vibe to it than really anything else especially when it comes to this came out in 1980 obviously and movies then that's when it was kind of getting cheesy and the slasher craze was kind of going on and you just weren't really getting uh necessarily that many completely serious films like this so uh i just always found the general tone and atmosphere to be pretty unique and um yeah, obviously I'm a pretty big fan. So, uh how do you feel about this one today? Like Well, um <laughs> I too am a pretty big fan of this movie. Um <laughs> you know, uh it's like I said, it just amazes me. This movie's two and a half hours long and I, it just never feels that way at all. Um and uh yeah, like honestly, like I've always said this, like if if someone had never seen a horror film before in their life, this would be the first movie I would show them to introduce them to the genre. Like, I think this is just psychological horror done at its absolute best. And it's it's really weird. Like, there really isn't another movie out there quite like this one. Like, it's really... Like, there's other psychological horror films that, like, are, that are, like, contained like this, but... I was just this one just separates itself from the rest of them like really mm. easily I think so like it's um kind of, you can say the same thing about the thing like there's really no other movie like exactly like that out there either but uh well, I guess aliens kind of similar but you know um yeah but uh yeah like with this movie like it's it's just it's psychological horror done as best and uh it just it just has everything in it like like, the characters in this film, there actually is a little bit of backstory we get, of course, with, uh, with, um, Jack Nichol Nicholas, and, uh, he, um, with him kind of, uh, accidentally hurting, uh, Danny, and, you know, the mistrust that Wendy has in him and stuff like that, and, um, mm -hmm. his, him, of course, uh, used to be an alcoholic and stuff like that, so you kind of get that that plays into, plays into the whole, you know, um, story a good bit there um but uh yeah uh just this just had everything like iconic scenes iconic characters iconic lines um just uh great score uh has great supernatural ghost elements to it great psychological you know aspects uh, it's just uh 
all around just an absolutely amazing movie. Yeah, um, that score, I love the score. I think that uh, there could be nothing really serious actually going on, and and that music just kind of comes in really intensely in some parts where literally nothing is really happening, but it, it just kind of gives you chills and makes you, it almost tricks you into thinking like, oh, that was so scary, but really it could just be like Wendy walking up to him and mm-hmm. saying like, oh, hi, and that's, then it's just done. And I think that's kind of brilliant. I mean, you know, some people might think like, oh, it's too overdramatic or something, but I think in the sense of this movie, it fits in really well. Um, I know a lot of complaint, I like I never read the book, I'll admit. It's one that I've always been interested in reading, but I'm just not a huge reader, so um, I've yet to actually pick it up and read it. Um, I don't own it or anything, but... Um, Obviously, one of the complaints that I hear people who read the book and whatnot say is that Jack Nicholson always seemed crazy from the start. And, yeah, as a kid, I actually, like, I kind of, when I was a kid, I didn't really understand the plot. Like, there was certain stuff, major stuff that I kind of missed and didn't get, like, the whole, the concept of Shining and all that. Mm-hmm. I I don't know. I just never really thought about it. And the... I actually thought that he was crazy before getting to the hotel, I remember. So um, I could see that as being a complaint, but I just don't really mind it. Um, I know JP doesn't really love this film either because he thinks that, you know, Wendy and the kid Danny are uh, kind of annoying characters. And watching the movie in recent time, uh, Wendy is kind of irritating, but the way she... Her personality just kind of mimics that of someone who's married to an alcoholic who mm-hmm. hurts their son. When I think yeah. about it, I feel like it's very – just her appearance, and she kind of has this just frazzled look and being about her that um, – you know, I bought, like I, I don't mind it. I feel like this family was pretty damaged when they get to the hotel already, and they're kind of trying to repair things, and then – of course, you have the supernatural aspect, and I could see why some people complain about that and say it takes away from the underlying thing that the hotel is supposed to be making him crazy. But I don't know. I just don't care. Like I think it's, I think it makes sense for this film. And you know, like we already said, I think there's nothing really like this. Um, I've seen the miniseries. I thought it was awful. Um, I'm not that excited for Doctor Sleep. I just think. Uh, it's not like Friday the 13th where you're like, oh, I can't wait for a new Friday the 13th to come out because it's going to be exactly like the other movies. Like, that's not what The Shining is. It's kind of just its own standalone thing. And if you make a sequel or a remake, it's not going to feel the same. And I think that also has to do with the guy who directed it as well. I mean, he wasn't a just a cheesy slasher or just horror director. He actually made some pretty good other films that weren't in the genre, but yeah, I could go on forever about this movie, obviously. (laughs) I felt same way about the last one and I could really go on for, uh, forever about this one too. I mean, like there's, I really don't, I really don't find Wendy annoying to be honest. Like I don't find anything wrong with the characters. I do like, I have like taken notice past a couple times I've watched this, like when they're like driving up, um, after Jack goes in for the interview and they're driving up and st- driving up the mountain, like Jack seems like he's like annoyed with him, like yeah, almost. Like that's... it's re- it's like it seems like they don't he doesn't like either one of them. He's like just annoyed with them. Like the way he's answering the questions, like yeah, like yeah, that's, ex- that's exactly why I used to think like oh this family's already crazy from the start, <laughs> like yeah. uh, or well he's like already in- possessed or whatever from the start because. Of that scene alone, it just you get the vibe that they've been driving for hours, and he it's just it, like with a kid, it's understandable, but it's just kind of comical how he also talks that way to his wife. Uh, well, mm-hmm. I did get to see this movie in theaters as well um, about a year, I think it was two years ago. They played it at one of the classic nights, the same place where they played the thing, and um, I was actually kind of laughing at some of the parts because you really kind of notice stuff more when you see it on the big screen and mm-hmm. just the way how annoying Wendy is sometimes and just <laughs> like how the how he reacts like when she comes in and interrupts him during his work I mean 
it, it comes off. It actually, I mean, it comes off as kind of scary and funny at the same time because you kind of get the sense that he's kind of cracking up and he's being like extra. He's really lashing out at her, kind of. But I don't know. It's just it's very intriguing uh, dialogue between characters and stuff like that. And I think you need kind of an interesting family to make this movie good because that's kind of who you're following the entire movie anyway. Yeah, I guess, like, Wendy is one of those characters who does, like, question stuff a lot, and she always, like, you know, uh, seems to just talk a lot, and just, you yeah. know... Yeah, uh, she's you very happy, like, she's a very, like, eccentric, happy, innocent type of person. Yeah. And it just seems like, you get the, it just seems like they kind of clash as a couple. Mm-hmm. Because he's more, like, uh, he's a writer, and he's kind of more serious and, like, uptight, mm-hmm. so... Yeah, I get that. I really, I don't find Danny annoying at all. He doesn't really have that many lines in the movie, so. <laughs> yeah, I don't, like that. That's something like you know, JP said that he's he doesn't really like him. I don't think he necessarily finds him annoying. I think he just doesn't is just not a fan. But I actually think he does a good job. Honestly, mm-hmm. he's like I picture myself at the age of six or five or whatever, and I I don't think I could be that serious and. Deliver. He he, he's actually pretty good at acting. Honestly, yeah. like there's maybe some parts where he's like, eh. But honestly, I think he's better than a lot of other kid actors in horror movies that I've seen. Yeah, I think I think it's a fantastic job. I mean, he's one of the. I think he's one of the best child actors I've seen in you know any horror film. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, everybody of course does a great job. You know, Shelley Duvall as uh, you know, fugly as she is, um, she she does act very uh, very. She has a very good job in this movie. Of course, she, you know, it's you know the noted, uh, noted kind of uh, torment she went through on set because of yeah. Stanley Kubrick. So uh, yeah, so that kind of she gives a kind of a uh, a legit or uh, what, what am I trying to say? Um, I'll just go with that performance. So <laughs> <laughs> legit performance, yes. Yeah, yeah so. I think. Yeah, they're like I think they're all really good. Um, you know, I think the obviously the girls that play the twins are yeah. good too. As kid, act- <laughs> there's actually I was watching this movie because you always kind of picture this movie as being like a three person film and that's it. But when you think about it, there's kind of a decent amount of characters. I mean, you have yeah. the cook and you have them, and then you have that whole party with all those extras in it, mm-hmm. and then you know there's actually more going on than just total isolation like with a thing you just have that group but you do have other characters in this movie that kind of come in and out uh which i never really thought about but um it's definitely definitely a good one um it's one that i can still to this day pop on really at any time and uh, when i'm done watching it i almost want to rewatch it and it's also one a lot of times people put on horror movies that they've seen a million times so they could do stuff in the background. But if I put this one on as background noise mm-hmm. and I try to do something else, I stop what I'm doing and start watching the film as if I'm going to miss out on something, which is ridiculous. But that just kind of proves how good of a movie and how much it kind of drags you in. Yeah, uh, definitely. Um, yeah, I kind of feel like... Um... This is one I probably watch probably about once a year, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like one, like, uh, the original Psycho. Probably watch that probably about once a year as well. Where, like, yeah. I, after I don't watch it for a while, and, like, when I think of, like, my favorite horror films, like, they don't usually, you know, they kind of fall down the list a little bit maybe. But then I, right after I watch it, I'm like, holy fuck. <laughs> like, um, it's, it's it's amazing. But, uh, yeah, um what would you say your favorite scene in the movie is? Um, I mean, let me think. I've always loved the parts where he's cut, like she's walking up the steps with the bats and he's coming at her because I just think that part has some fantastic lines. Um, I also like the scene towards the end where she's, you know, running through the hotel and then she's seeing all the weird stuff like of course the bear and the guy in the room and then still know what the hell that means but uh yeah. whatever man <laughs> yeah 
But uh, <laughs> it doesn't, like, that's the thing. It's just, like, a creepy, like, what the heck moment. Yeah, exactly. In this, yeah. I love it. Uh, I, well, the whole movie is obviously my favorite because I keep naming scenes. Um, mm-hmm. I, but to put me on the spot, I think probably my actual favorite scene is when he goes into the, uh, what is that, the ballroom, I guess, and they're actually having, like, a party, and <laughs> then he runs into Grady. I just, I've always been kind of intrigued by that scene and I just like the how it's obviously set in the 1920s if you look at the way they're all dressed and stuff like that I think it's pretty haunting so and then his when they go in that bathroom it's bright red that's probably the most colorful thing there's a lot of color in this movie honestly but Mm -hmm. that's like one of the most vivid parts of the film so yeah that's kind Um, of yeah I'd say probably I do like the entire ending, like the Jack chase scene with Danny and stuff like that. I think that's great. And, of course, Wendy running through the hotel and mm-hmm. you know, seeing the bear and all the blood and shit like that. Um, I, I think that's just fantastic. But uh, one scene I had to pick would probably be the scene where he walks in on the uh, naked lady in the shower and then she just turns into this uh, uh, grotesque, naked old woman. I just think that's... Uh, always just really really creepy to me yeah i love that's one you know we were talking about what a pussy i am before the show that's a scene i used to hide my eyes every time it came on when i was a kid it took me forever to actually watch that scene and see what that woman looked like but i love um when he's backing out and then just the way that scene shot is so like weird how you hear her laughing and then you see her like coming out of the tub slowly like she's still laying in the bathtub and kind of it's just such a weird unique way to film that part and then when he closes the door and walks away that always really creeped me out that you still hear her laughing and you feel like she's still there's still just this woman in this room even though it's obviously like a ghost but uh it's a pretty pretty creepy scene i would say yeah now do you have um, do you have like any, you know, theories or whatever that to, as to what you know the ending of the film actually means? Because there's really I don't feel like there's one set, you know, you know meaning for well a bunch of stuff in this movie, which is you know one of the things I absolutely love about this movie because you go back and you know look for some of this stuff, you know, see if you can figure out what the hell it um, it actually means, but. Uh, do you have, like, any theories as to what? Um, I used to, yeah, I used to be confused by that, um, and I don't, like, I don't think it's ever come, I don't know that there's ever been an actual true explanation, but I always took it as, like, that, like, that, like I said, that scene where he's talking to, um, Grady in the bathroom, and he's, he says, you are the caretaker here, you've always been the caretaker here, I think it's kind of, supposed to be he's like everyone who comes to that hotel becomes sucked into what just the history of it and then he's in that picture and then probably like the next guy who comes to be the caretaker or whatever he'll go crazy and then he'll it'll be as if he was back alive back it's hard to explain but it's as if he's always been kind of part of the hotel's history and everyone just kind of gets stuck inside this back in time thing it's like you're all just you all just become these ghosts within the place mm. i don't know it's it's really hard to put into words yeah that, really that's, think that, about it that's more what the conclusion i came to this time is he becomes part of the hotel basically yeah it's like um, he's always been there but mm-hmm. really he hasn't it's just once he dies he he's trapped yep so uh yeah um i think we pretty much covered just about everything this me. I do really like the uh, the jump, the kind of jump scare kill. That's, that scene all used to scare the shit out of me when I was a kid because I never used to know when it was coming when he jumps out and kills the cook. So yeah, me awesome. too. Actually, yeah, <laughs> that always that whole thing. My dad used to make fun of that. He like whenever the cook would die, he would be like, "Man, I just took nine days to get out here and I get killed right away." And it, it always 
it is very comical. You get all these just um, filler scenes of this cook taking a plane, renting a car, calling up all these people, and then he walks in, and within five seconds, he's just murdered instantly. Like, he does nothing heroic, and just, I've yeah. always just found that to be pretty funny, honestly. But, um, yeah, uh, pretty pretty good movie, pretty creepy. I, I would say it's an all right film, honestly, average so okay. above average maybe yeah. Yeah. which there are some people out there that don't like this movie which honestly like up until like a year ago I could I didn't even think was a thing like I was just like I I thought everybody loved this movie because I couldn't I just can't I just really couldn't imagine still really can't wrap my head about people not liking this movie honestly I, I just uh, I mm-hmm. think it's just amazing yeah I would agree like I said you know JP he it's kind of he kind of has the feelings towards this movie that I have towards the thing where he really respects it and sees why it's a near perfect film but to him it's like I guess if I can understand if you don't like your three main characters like the family you're following you're probably not going to like this movie because that's all you're following for the majority of the film but I don't know I've always really enjoyed it so um <laughs> Well, that, that concludes our <laughs> giant reviews, very in-depth <laughs> reviews of both these movies that we promised we weren't going to get into, but well, it's we hard, did, like... We, did, we didn't, like, you know, go scene by scene and stuff like that. Yeah. We usually do. Yeah. So that's that's more what I was referring to. We're not going to do, so... Um, we, it's hard not to geek out whenever yeah, you exactly. your favorite movies in the I, world. I, I said, I, like I said, we were going to talk about these two a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, I guess um, if it all wasn't obvious, you know, the thing is my uh, favorite horror film of all time. You know, I just think everything about it's absolutely perfection. You know, I, I don't have a single issue with anything about this film. Every scene, every shot um, is just perfect for me. Um, and. Uh, yeah, uh, honestly, I would, um, after watching it this time, I would say The Shining's probably near my top five, honestly. I just absolutely uh, love this film, and um, honestly, I would say, like, this is another kind of another kind of comparison, this is really my opinion, but if I were to, if someone were to tell me to, you know, put all my you know, bias aside and, you know, name what I thought were the two best horror films ever made, I would say these two films, honestly. Like, I Mm. think they are just the best, you know, at what they do, the thing being body horror, this one being, like, a supernatural, you know, psychological horror film. I think they're the best of those two, like, subgenres, and uh, I just, I, I don't have, you know, really any problems with The Shining whatsoever. Like, I just... I think it's a perfect film too, so Yeah. I mean I would agree. I think they're both pretty much perfect. Um another thing about them, they're not like necessarily franchise movies. Like I said, they have like Shining has its mini series and then of course he just wrote that other book that's kind of uh, a loose sequel to The Shining and then with The Thing you have the prequel and that was also based on a story and then you have um, I guess The Thing from the Other World which is I, I've actually never seen that movie so I can't even say what that's even about or if it's anything have you seen The Thing from Another World? Huh? Yeah yeah, I've seen it for the first time like probably a year or so ago um, it's pretty cool like it's you know it's basically it's a monster movie. It's not it has mm-hmm. nothing to do with like the shape shifting you know thing whatever like alien thing. It's like a giant Frankenstein monster that thaws from the ice basically and starts wrecking shit. So it's a completely yeah. different from the book and you know the Carpenter film. So that's what I assumed, especially for the time it came out. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, like I was saying, it's these movies aren't like I said Halloween or Friday the 13th or um, anything like that where they have a million sequels they're kind of in a way their own sort of standalones even though they do have those small uh, connections to other films um, that's another reason they kind of stick out in my opinion is um, they're just kind of there and they're both really fantastic movies 
uh, that came out in the 80s. And um, I would agree, they're they're both pretty much perfect. Um, I feel like I feel like people probably like I was saying, the thing is kind of flawless. Like it's really hard to even think of anything yeah, to I, talk I, negatively about yeah, it. I, I've never heard one person say they don't like the thing. Not one yeah. person. And then The Shining, on the other hand, I feel there are nitpicks, especially with people who are true to the novel and um, people who just don't really care for the family, think they're weirdos or annoying or whatever, and also people who might think it's just kind of slow and maybe doesn't make sense. So um, I could definitely see how people probably, if you were the general audience comparing the two movies, they would say the thing is more of the flawless, perfect film. But in my eyes, they are both fantastic movies, and also in my eyes, they are both perfect. Um, obviously, The Shining is my favorite, and The Thing is your favorite, though. That's, like, the big difference here. All right, so I guess we shall uh, rate these and uh, see what happens. So I guess I'll go first with both of them. Um, yeah, it's it's kind of anticlimactic, but, of course, The Thing giving a 10... The Shining, also giving a 10. Um, no doubt about it for these two movies. Um, I would honestly say um, probably if I was, you know, basing these movies objectively, I'd probably I'd probably put The Shining a little bit above the thing, honestly, in terms of, you know, what's the, you know, better movie, I guess. I just think The Shining has a lot, just a lot of, like, a lot more, like, aspects going on for it, um, um, with it, uh, um, both perfect films, but um, you know, um, obviously um, the thing's my favorite, so that's the one I would uh, I would uh, prefer just slightly over The Shining. Yeah, um, I mean, same here. I think like, I think they are both ten out of ten films. Um, as I've said many times, uh, The Thing, while it's not my most favorite movie in the world. Uh, I can't sit here and be like, pick it apart and deny that it's pretty much uh, an amazing movie. I mean, there is not, like I said, there's nothing really to say bad about the movie. So um, I can't help but to give it a 10. Um, the Shining, give it a 10 as well. Um, like I said, I almost feel like people were probably, I feel like, if I gave these two movies to a non-horror fan and said to watch them, they would probably prefer The Thing over The Shining and think it's more of an entertaining watch with uh, just the characters and the storyline and the uh, visual effects and all that. Uh, so I almost feel like The Thing would win, but then again, I feel like The Shining might be a little more original and just the filmmaking and the style and um like with the thing you said, Alien, and even a movie I watched recently, Le Leviathan, and there, there's been movies that are kind of similar to it in concept, and The Shining kind of just has always really stand, stood out to me as being kind of its own little masterpiece. So I don't know, though. It's really hard. Yeah. I don't, want, I don't want to be biased. I would pick The Shining, but I feel like the general audience would go with The Thing. Yeah, well, this ain't, this ain't about the general audience. You know, we're, we decide which movie gets the win, not, uh, not the, uh, the audience. So, uh, yeah. yeah um, so we have a tie with this, with yeah. two tens, but they're, we're, we're, we're not pussies. We don't do ties. We're not the NFL, but... Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, so I think I think The Shining is gonna end up probably getting the nod from us because, like I said, mm. it is all it's your favorites and probably near my top five, definitely in my top ten. Um, and the thing wouldn't be as high as that on your favorites list, probably I would imagine. Yeah, it definitely isn't in my top ten, probably. Uh, top 20 or 30, but um, not in my top 10. I just think it's a perfect movie, but n just not rewatchable for me. That's what it all comes down to. So, And like I said, The Shining feels slightly more original. I mean, the, asp 
the idea of isolation and paranormal and all that isn't original by any sense of the word, but um, I think it, as far as filmmaking and tone, it's got just a, a vibe that cannot be beat. So that's kind of where I stand on that. Yeah, so, well, it looks like uh, we have voted for The Shining to uh, get uh, the win here, I guess. Um, so, yeah, just uh, just by a smidge. Both pretty much, you know, like we said, perfect movies. So it's it's tough. It's tough to decide. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, what was that? I didn't say anything. I heard your voice come through. It was like, it was like a, I heard your voice for like a half a second. It was like glitched. <laughs> That's that might be a ghost because I didn't make. I legit <laughs> didn't say it unless it was fuck? a noise. I might have made a noise. It, my heat, my heat did kick on, so that might have made yeah, a sound. It sounded exactly like your voice. It was. That's so actually, weird. That creeps me out. Dude. Calm down. <laughs> You're gonna um, give me the spooks. Yeah, we're gonna wrap this episode up before uh, some crazy shit starts happening. Um, <laughs> Yes, uh, let us know what you guys thought. Uh, what's your favorite movie out of these two films? Uh, you guys can, uh, of course, check us out on our both of our um, other podcasts that we do. Of course, the Woodsboro Bros and Netflix and Trash. I mean, Netflix and Chill. Um, what? I see. I, I, I just didn't think we were going to play that game. I thought we were going to, like, kind of be a team here you thought, and you thought, you thought support that, each other. Go the, whole, the whole episode without pulling a little bit of that stuff. We almost did. We were making it, well, and you, of course, root. You dropped the ball like you always do. So. Oh my God. Here we go. Um. But anyways, yeah, check that out. Check out uh, Carly's YouTube channel. Um. And also, we have a a Facebook page, a uh, Facebook group for our uh, podcast. Uh, just look up the MVM Horror Podcast on Facebook. Um. Uh, we will uh, let you in as long as you don't have a uh, a shady name and uh, aren't a part of um, 10,000 groups and <laughs> um, but uh, yeah come join us and uh, yeah let us know what you guys thought give us some feedback um, uh, what you guys thought of the episode and uh, yeah we have some uh, cool uh, already have a couple of episodes planned ahead uh, our next episode I think we decided uh, we're each going to pick an 80 slasher to uh, review basically 80 slashers, like I said, are pretty much all the same, uh, the same thing, pretty much. So yeah, we can we can pick any two basically. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you guys for listening, uh, and we will uh, catch you guys next time. Peace. Peace.